Today you join me while I'm looking at a Tesla Powerwall 3, but not just a normal Tesla Powerwall 3, this one has an expansion pack, which means it has an additional capacity. Now in the past with Powerwall 2, you had to buy another Powerwall 2 to add any extra capacity. With the Powerwall 3, you can buy add-on expansion packs, which just extend the battery without extending another inverter, which means it's easier to get DNO approval because you're only expanding the storage and not the inverter power. So stick around for this video to find out some of the unique advantages of about this if you're looking for a quote for a battery or solar install go to evnick.com forward slash heatable so this is will one of my friends who's had a battery installed here and some solar panels on the back well why did you go with heatable i went with heatable through your recommendation really yeah and will is actually you're a friend yeah you're not like some random person off youtube yeah it wasn't YouTube. just for a referral first of all let's look at the specs now this is a 13.5 kilowatt hour usable battery and then the expansion packs are also 13.5 kilowatt hour usable you can add an extra free expansion pack so you can only have four of these batteries in total so that's free expansion packs plus one main power wall it is also means that adding an expansion pack gives you more charging power. So if you just have one Tesla Powerwall on its own, Powerwall 3 on its own, it will charge the battery at 5 kilowatts. But if you add an expansion pack, it goes up to 8 kilowatts. It doesn't go up simultaneously for another expansion pack by another 3 kilowatts. It's 8 kilowatts as soon as you add one expansion pack, and then that is maxed out at 8 kilowatt hours. Now, the price of this fully installed for just one tesla power wall free comes in at 7995 but if you add an expansion pack you'll be adding an extra 5500 pounds to the price now this is these are the latest prices from heatable they are subject to change and at the time of making this video there is discussions that some of the prices are going up the gateway price has already gone up and heatable have slightly absorbed that cost already into their costings but there is rumors that the tesla power wall free packs are also going to go up this tesla power wall uh, down here on the far right of your house is there a reason why you picked this location it just kept it out of sight right okay on it <laughs> and and no other reason just apart from it's out of sight yeah out of sight so it's uh just not too visible for everyone to see okay and there was the, uh, the why did you go for the tesla power wall over say any of the other systems that are available uh, my understanding was theirs was the the best they do the off-grid integration and they're quite happy outside in the winter these two power packs sit down at a little gully in his home where there's not much room which is why the filming location is a bit difficult for me to film down here but it's as you can see fitted as low down to the ground as possible which is not a worry with these systems because they can actually be submerged in water to quite a decent depth the tesla power wall has a heater and uh, also cooling so it can work down to minus 10 and up to a really ridiculous high temperature you'll never see here in the uk but i will put the figure down below on the bottom of the screen it can also work in a hundred percent humidity basically we're fully electric we've got no gas we've got no oil we haven't got anything else so we use a lot of electricity throughout the year so will really is in the sticks he's in the middle of nowhere now this these two batteries here will give him a huge capacity 27 kilowatt hours yeah. Uh, from memory so what do you typically use on a winter's day in electricity in, in a day 120 kilowatt hours something okay. like that and you're just on a single phase supply <clears throat> so it's 120 because you are just pure electric yeah it's the electric heating that really eats into that okay so you're probably a prime candidate for maybe an air to air heat pump system to go yeah, which get. is the next job yeah powerwall 2 owners need to be aware that the powerwall 3 is not compatible with their existing system. So you can't add a Powerwall 3 or Powerwall 3 expansion pack to a Powerwall 2. Powerwall 2 systems, you need to buy another Powerwall 2 system or sell your Powerwall 2 system and upgrade to a Powerwall 3. They're not compatible. So that, that is the big problem that a lot of existing people who've got Powerwall 2 have expressed with the Powerwall 3, but they are different cell chemistries and they do a lot of different things. So the Powerwall 3 now has DC inputs for the solar system strings and it also has a higher capacity charging and discharge rate. I'm expecting it to half our current electricity payments. Okay. On it, that's from offsetting everything basically to a cheaper rate. During the summer, we will probably generate and use all the solar instead of exporting any back and be almost off grid. And then during the winter, we'll offset a lot of our usage. Okay, and then the, the, there is other benefits to the Tesla Powerwall. So it does offline power. Is that a benefit to you? We do get quite a few power cuts around here. Okay. So that will be quite helpful, yeah. Yeah, and you and you and your wife often work from home as well. Yeah. So 
Yeah, so I think we it's only in January we lost power for almost the whole day. Now there's two ways of installing Tesla Power All Free. You can have them side by side like this arrangement. But this is the most expensive way of, of doing it because you have to buy a new glass front for this because it doesn't come with the glass front if they are mounted basically back to back so normally they'd be, this would be at the back the, this one the the power wall inverter itself would be at the front and they'd be mounted back to back so you don't need another cover so you're basically buying another cover when you mount it like this and i think you have to buy an extra wall bracket as well to mount it on the back now the second front cover doesn't light up so the first front cover lights up lets you gives you an indication of what the tesla power wall is doing but the second one is just the tesla logo there's nothing else there it's just the glass sheet and and the you know basically a plain t so it doesn't give you any indication i actually wish they did maybe light this up a little bit just to give an indication of charge state of what the batteries are at or give another indication but I suppose if you did mount them back to back, then this would be a relevant part of the hardware. So I get why they've done it. Now they're DC linked. That means that there's a DC cable running between the two power walls to link them together. And the way that works is basically this charges up this and then the DC power runs that way. It's the most efficient way of running several battery systems. Now it can work with existing solar systems. So my friend here has had it installed, already has existing solar system from a fit system. And this will just basically operate like a, 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 an AC coupled battery. So it will work as AC coupled battery. You don't have to have solar with it at the same time, or you can have extra solar put on it like my friend here has done and still use the uh, AC sort of coupling system as you would as if it wasn't, you know, the additional solar wasn't there. So it can play quite happy with other systems and existing systems. This battery now can do its full, I think it's 11.04 uh, kilowatt hours. But it also, if you only got a grid code approved on one of these at 3.68, if you had a power cut, it will actually work out to the full inverter power. So you can, even with the power cut, you can just use it to its full potential. And the one trick is, if you didn't have a power cut and you were using a lot of electricity just turn off your fuse for your house and simulate a power cut and then you can power your whole house if the battery was obviously full it looks like you do that from the app as well you can tell it to go off grid oh can you yeah so if you just wanted to just run off grid you could do that yeah and then the other thing it's got is uh, this has got uh, solar strings inside it so you've obviously instead of going for the heatables end phase system you just had the solar panels put straight into here yeah how many solar panels have you got i've got six more added there so it was 2.4 kilowatts right so six panels which normally on an inverter probably would just be close to being the right voltage for turning it on but the tesla powerwall 3 has a very low switch on voltage very similar to what uh, an m phase microinverter is so it does give you that that flexibility of installing less panels i think you can go down to two or three panels uh, on this which is very very low so will's only right near the minimum of amount of panels you can have on it the other advantage is if you have a power cup it will keep the system running. So you can still use your existing old fit system solar yep. and still use the solar off the, off, off the roof there. And they'll both work in the event of a power cut, which means if you did have a weak power outage, in theory, you would still have some backup power yeah. in the house. Yeah, if we get a power cut during a nice sunny day, we should be quite happy. Now this is the Tesla Gateway 2, even though it's a Tesla Gateway Powerwall 3. They haven't upgraded the Tesla Powerwall gateway yet. It's still the two, not the three, but the three is coming, but it does exactly the same thing. It's essentially in here, a fuse board. So in there, you've got basically uh, switches, RCDs, but it also has a special relay for working out whether the power is offline or online. So basically if there's a power cut, it will isolate the grid and then power the battery. That way, if the grid came back online, people or, or anyone working on the grid isn't going to get electrocuted when the grid comes back online it will switch back over you have to have a gateway or a, a switch like this a, a, a basically an off power system to separate the grid for safety reasons the other thing that this is able to do is it talks to the tesla power wall free to control stuff but it also talks to the internet and works out for storm damage uh, storm information so if it knows there's going to be a big storm in the area that could potentially cause a power cut it will tell the tesla power walls to go into charge mode and charge them up or even reserve a battery of about 80 percent in the battery to ensure that if there is a power cut there is enough power in the system to keep the power and the house powered during a power cut now because the 
gateway goes up to, like I said, a huge amount of kilowatts. It's double the power of the old power wall too, but it also means that you don't have to worry about turning off load, like maybe charging an electric car during, you know, from the from the power. So if you did need a couple of kilowatts in your car to get to work during a power cut, there is enough power in the batteries in the gateway to power an electric car or run a tumble dryer or run your oven or induction oven or in a home like this where it's fully electric keep the heating on and the house warm one of the big plus features with the tesla powerwall is it fully integrates into the tesla app so if you already have a tesla or a tesla charger or the tesla app it will fully integrate into that it's one of the smoothest cleanest apps that i've seen out of all solar battery apps that i've used it's very nice simple easy to use interface it shows quite a lot of data now one of the things that I didn't like about it is if you've got existing solar like Will has here, when the engineer installs it, he can see the solar that's coming off the DC strings in here um, on, the, on the installer app, and you can see the grid load and solar uh, for the other solar that's not part of this system. You can see all that. However, in the customer app, you can only see the solar as a joint. So combine solar with what's he got on the, the roof over there, which is in the inverter, and the existing solar array. It doesn't break it down into different arrays. In other words, it doesn't say which one's plugged into the DC and which one is coming off the CT clamps. So that's a little bit annoying. It's one of the few sort of minus points on the Tesla app, which I'm sure Tesla could easily fix because if it's in the installer app, they have the data, obviously. They just haven't separated it into the customer app. So it would be nice to see that. There is other things in there that like the storm watch and off power mode settings and forcing it into off power mode. There's loads of stuff that you can do in the Tesla app that you can't do in others. Now, if you're after one of these batteries, go to evnick.com forward slash heatable forward slash battery. We can get an online quote from heatable instantly for a quote on one of these Tesla power walls. Now, if you didn't want Tesla power wall and you want another battery, then maybe check out these videos here all the other batteries that Heatable do that me and Ben, the director of Heatable, have looked at together.